This presentation is a follow-up of the one I gave three years ago at the same gathering. In the upper right corner, you see the names of Srivinasan and Iyengar. It is uh, these two men who were great enthusiasts for uh, thorium energy and have studied um, in India um, the possibility of using fusion neutrons to breed thorium and have run into serious difficulties with the cost of tritium, etc. And then they have learned of uh, our technology using DD and using fusion in colliding beams. This is the device that uh, has been operating till the mid 1980s, where we have uh, collided the beams of deuterons of uh, 725 kilovolts and have a mass massively produced tritium, etc., uh, in beam-beam collisions. Their conclusion was that indeed this system, using our technology, which is used deuterium rather than tritium as fuel, would be able to reach a scientific gain of 4.2. And that was the end of my talk last time. Clearly, 4.2 scientific gain is too marginal to have economic value. Um, however, within the past year, we have uh, had a very close look at it because there were two barriers to be overcome. The first one was this one, that the economy was really not there, that it looked like an academic exercise. Then we have learned that the hel one gram of helium-3 is selling now for $74,000. We had no idea at the time. At the same time that uh, we have known that one gram of tritium is $35,000. When these two things are added and we have decided to convert dollars into MEVs per atom, like a, new, like a currency, um, uh, if you look at the upper left side, you will see that actually in one day a system that we proposed uh, together with the Indians would be able to produce 1.58 gram of neutrons in the same time 4.75 grams of helium-3 and 4.75 grams of tritium. That was uh, because the fusion reactions that are taking place are DD going into triton and proton and parallel one helium-3 plus neutron. When we added up these numbers, we arrived at the strange conclusion, not only that uh, thorium we would be able to produce at no cost, that there would be actually an extra profit of $500,000 a day from the sale of helium-3 and tritium. Uh, this now changes the entire picture. Uh, the, how the system works is shown in the lower part where you see that the beam from a 1.5 MeV accelerator is injected into a weak focusing magnetic field. We, and it makes, uh, in the center, uh, it is dissociated, these are D2+, plus, dissociated into single D1, uh, D pluses, which are self-colliding in center. And uh, we have, for instance, if you see the, at the lower peak, this is tritium. We have massively been producing tritium, and we didn't even look at it uh, as, um, as a solution to this issue of uh, economics, because the tritium was a strategic material, but helium-3 is not. If you, uh, the, this is a proof of tritium. It shows you that there are two peaks. Uh, when deuteron hits a deuteron, gas deuteron, the energy of uh, proton and triton will be uh, 800 kilo, kilowatts, uh, kilo electron volts lower than when it's beam to beam. So you can see distinctly on the left uh, beam on gas and the right and separated their beam, beam on beam. When, so we arrived at the figures using exactly these data. We didn't have to go back to our logbooks because we just took this data from Physical Review Letters publications of 1986 and arrived at this conclusion that 
six uh, grams of neutrons will be produced together with the two byproducts that could sell for $500,000 a day. So we are talking really uh, of a completely different plant uh, that we have changed the entire picture because one gram of neutrons, as I was told today, with the direct accelerator on target is about $120,000, but here will be free. Uh, this system, I must remind you, and this is an important point, had an energy confinement time of ions of 24 seconds. I want to tell you that the, the Tokamak and the general magnetic fusion program for the last 60 years has accomplished a, a confinement time of 0.26 seconds, and it is not even sure that this is correct. So this is now no longer plasma. These are colliding beams. Beams are ordered system, and we were able to stabilize them by external DC signals. We inject the beam, and we stop the injection at eight seconds, and then let it decay. But in order to do that, if you look at the lower picture, we had to do a nonlinear damping. In other words, we had to change the external frequency on the stored beam. In other words, this is not a Landau damping, which is, which is uh, done by increasing the amplitude. Nonlinear dampling is done by changing the frequency. These are two, uh, it has to be clear that it's not Landau damping. So this was a weak, weak focusing system. Weak focusing means that the uh, d decrease of the magnetic field strength with the radius B, B, versus, B sub Z versus R is, a, is a in, in of the order of 0.1 to 2.3, and 0.1, 0 0.3. Uh, weak focusing systems were first accelerators and betatrons, but uh, revolution in beam physics came with the invention of strong focusing, which increased the beam uh, current stored by a factor of 100 to 1,000. In other words, since the invention of strong focusing, um, the uh, big accelerators uh, have been uh, working on the, on the strong focusing principle, while weak focusing has a very slow change of magnetic field with the radius. Uh, strong focusing has, as you can see, left very sharp change and then going down. In other words, this sharp change by itself would destabilize the beam, but the hit, but immediately it enters a negative gradient, which destabilizes. So it is destabilize, destable, stable, destable, stable. This is therefore uh, strong focusing magnet works works on, has to have alternate gradient focusing, and um, a very famous, uh, essentially number one of beam physicists at Brookhaven, John Blewett who we were happy to be on our team, has designed for us a um, strong focusing, response focusing colliding beam system, which we, which we have, uh, the numbers of it we have used in presenting to you those figures where, that produce uh, uh, money in addition to free, um, to, to free thorium. I have a handout here, and, and it essentially says the same, the same thing here, you see under this yellow that, uh, that we will get, um, that we will produce uh, 70, that is 76 kilogram per gram. In other words, that we produce helium and tritium enough to compensate and overcompensate for the electricity cost. So our design is uh, to have a strong focusing self collider, eight injectors. Each injector is, has to be about one MeV injector. And um, as you can see inside, the beams collide and then bounce back and forth between these. Uh, and we, be, we, we believe that this, based on our present data, um, efficiencies will be reached sufficient for building a plant. So we believe we have come to the stage that we can initiate an industry academic consortium to seek private investments for commercialization of isotope breeder, Exciter. Exciter is the name of strong focusing cell collider that Bluet invented, but never built. So which will also, as a byproduct, it may have a fusion power. But the main product is going to be isotopes. We seek 
partners, we would like to have this entirely privately funded with 100 million dollars to form a consortium between universities and academic. And we are also looking for people who are interested in management, in business management of it. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.